Yeah, so I'm Dave Christensen. Uh, I'm a research technician uh, working with stem cells at the University of Southampton. Um, and like a lot of stem cell researchers, I am using stem cells to study a disease. Uh, in my case, I'm studying a disease called Salisbury fundus dystrophy. Um, which is big words, you don't need to worry about. But, um, <laughs> and uh, this disease seems to affect one particular cell type. And you might ask what part of the body has that particular cell type? And the answer is, like a parliamentary vote on whether to give MPs a pay rise, the eyes have it. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm studying a disease that causes blindness. And uh, because I'm studying a disease that causes blindness, I work in a vision science research group, and my boss is an ophthalmologist, an eye doctor. But sometimes he seems more like a sci-fi character. <laughs> so, for example, uh, recently, in a lab meeting, during a discussion about some safety training he needs to do, he said, but I've been firing lasers at humans for decades. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got to wonder about a doctor that refers to their patients as humans. <laughs> <laughs> so, how does, how does this work? How do I use stem cells to study blindness? Well, I work with a particular type of stem cell called an induced pluripotent stem cell, or IPS cells, for you to do. Um, so all you need to know about IPS cells, the cool thing about IPS cells, is that we can make them from any type of cell, and then we can change them into any other type of cell. So we take skin cells from patients, and we turn those skin cells into these IPS cells, stem cells, and then we change those IPS cells into these retinal epithelial cells, these cells on the back of the eye. And then I can study these disease cells and see what's going wrong in them and try and understand how the disease develops and maybe I can come up with some kind of treatment for the disease. And that sounds like a really cool project and it is a pretty cool project but on a day-to-day -day basis it's really boring. Um, <laughs> it's just lots of looking down the microscope of cells and nothing works as much as I'd like it to work. <laughs> so I spend my days pretending to be a detective. <laughs> just to entertain myself. Um, a private eye, if you will. <laughs> Hi, I'm Detective Dave Christensen. Uh, yes, I, I don't know why he's got the same name as me. Um, all I can say is that I didn't get this job as a lab technician because of my imaginative skills. But I'm Holland and Karen. Um, Hi, I'm Detective Dave Christensen. I might not be the best detective, I mean, I'm hardly a character from a book by Len Staten. <laughs> I'm no Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock, look, Sherlock Holmes? Yeah. <laughs> but I'm the guy you want if the case you've got to solve is the murder on the Vision Express. <laughs> you might not like my methods, but I get results. So, I've been in the for a while. I don't know why. I prefer to say I'm married to the lab. Well, I'm obviously that's meaningless. And it's not what's written on my online dating profiles. Uh, they don't have a drop down box for married to the lab. So, so. But um, there's some truth in that. The most meaningful recent relationships I've had have been with my stem cells. Um, I spend every day with them and I talk to them a lot. And, and they don't answer back, which I like. Um, so, sorry, I just want to say I don't agree with everything that the detective says. So, uh, yeah, I should have warned you about some of his views. Um, sorry. But, um, but the problem is that people say that you shouldn't try and change your partner. You should love them for who they are. But all I'm doing with my stem cells is trying to get them to change and make them the retinal cells that I dream of. <laughs> and, then, and then they die on me. And uh, that's sad. But it's okay, because then I move on to their daughter cells. <laughs> so, sorry, then. Um, Anyway, I want to tell you about the current case I'm working on. I'm working on the mysterious death of these cells at the back of the eye of these patients with Salisbury fundus dystrophy. You see, these, these cells, when they die, they cause a chain reaction. The results, 
in loss of sight. And it happens because when these cells die, it has a similar effect to when you introduce drunk students to road works. <laughs> you get a serious loss of cones. <laughs> oh, I like the people that wrote some cones. <laughs> I'm not sure what I was going to say is playing that one. If you didn't get it, ask oh, someone sat next to you. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, we, uh, we managed to identify the suspect. I'm losing which voice I'm supposed to be. Uh, we found the suspect. He was easy to find. He was easy to find uh, because it's a genetic disease that I'm studying. So uh, you find the gene which is in all of the people with the disease and not in any of the people without the disease. So you find the gene, so we've got the suspect. But the problem is we don't know how we do it. I'm still mixing that voice, don't worry. Uh, also, it really hurts my throat. I've been practicing all day and it's getting increasingly painful. <laughs> Carry on doing um, Yeah, so the problem is we don't know how we do it. But, uh, you know what I did when I first found the suspect and I was trying to piece it together how he did it? I took him down the station, that's what he calls the lab, <laughs> and I said, stick him in the cell, boys. <laughs> Biological cell, of course, rather than a prison cell. Because if you're going to need some protein, put it in a cell, you see what goes wrong, see how the disease develops, put it. <laughs> so it works. Uh, yeah, tell me more what happens next. But, um, so, although I've been saying so far that uh, I tend to think of this, cell as, this um, disease affecting one particular type of cell, some people think that maybe actually the disease starts not inside the eye, but just outside the back of the eye in the blood supply. And, and actually, the most common treatment that is used to treat this disease and other similar diseases just involves an injection that stops cells invading into the eye from the blood supply behind it. And this kind of just strikes me as this thing that people seem to do now, which is just blame outsiders for everything. <laughs> uh, it's them bloody invading blood vessels, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of one step away from trying to build a wall around the eye or something, but um, that's a lot of rubbish and wouldn't work anyway. But, um, <laughs> but I think that I tend to think of the disease as only really affecting, or sort of initially affecting the cells in the eye, but it might be that um, it's a bit of both, that it's things going wrong in the eye and things going wrong outside the eye behind it. Um, uh, there's, uh, there's violence on both sides, on many sides. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, uh, I'm not a fan of Trump, obviously. <laughs> Um, I think I'm nearly out of time, but uh, I've got uh, well, one more thing. One, one more thing. That's for anyone who's in Columbia. Um, not a good impression, but never mind. Uh, so, the disease I'm studying is supposed to be fungus dystrophy. It's quite a rare disease, but it's very similar to a much more common disease, um, the most common cause of blindness in this country, a disease called age related macular degeneration, uh, which is a disease of People in their 60s, 70s, 80s start to lose their sight. Whereas Salisbury Fundus Dystrophy is considered like the young person version of AMD. And uh, it's a disease that affects people in their, anywhere from their 30s to their 50s. And this is great because I'm going to turn 30 in just over a month. <laughs> and while that might seem an uncomfortable milestone when I'm single and spend my days pretending to be a detective, <laughs> it's a relief to think that I'm still medically defined as a young person for another 20 or 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, 